So as you probably noticed, the name of my presentation is quite long. And let me remind you that the topic of this session is structural engineering for fun. And usually when you see such a long name, you are not going to think it will be fun. <laughs> but I'm going to speak about roller coasters. And roller coasters are always fun. So let's start. And let's start from distinguishing two different load, dynamic load types. The first one is a moving load, for example, a train passing through a bridge. In this case, the magnitude of the load is constant, but its, its location is changing with constant velocity. And the second one is variable load, like seismic load. In this case, the uh, load application points are fixed, but the magnitude of the load is changing over time. But what if the structure, but what if the load is moving and is changing over time and its velocity is no, uh, not constant and its direction is also changing? Well, as you have already guessed, it's a roller coaster. Uh, roller coaster considered in this work uh, is a steel roller coaster, support, uh, the tracks supported by steel columns. Um, the ride consists of different various elements, uh, such as loops, you can see two here, cobra roll, a couple of dives, barrel rows, so many elements. This type of roller coaster is, the, is called an inverted roller coaster. Uh, in this type of roller coaster, the train with passengers is hanged beneath the track, uh, not, it doesn't sit on top of the track. Uh, the track section consists of the box girder and two tubular rails connected with steel plates. The columns of the roller coaster are tubular sections. And the track spans between the columns are approximately 8 to 12 meters if measured by the curve. The highest point of the roller coaster is plus 30 meters and the lowest is minus 3.5 meters. And it's actually below the ground. You can see a little tunnel made in here. So during the ride, at some point, the train dies inside this tunnel and makes passengers happy. <laughs> <laughs> One important thing I have to tell is to say that this is not the real roller coaster. It's the hypothetic roller coaster. So, and this project doesn't relate to my work in any, in any kind. Uh, so it was done entirely for my entertainment. <laughs> uh, so, now let's speak about passenger safety. The amusement effect of any roller coaster uh, is achieved by uh, G-forces which passengers experience. And, but you cannot, uh, the key to success is not in hitting the limits of the uh, G-forces at every turn, but uh, the key is to success is in combining the turns with the high G-forces and so-called zero gravity turns. This will provide the maximum amusement effect to the passengers. But when designing the trajectory of a roller coaster, you can try to get as close to these limits as possible. But this is not a good idea. I will tell you why. Since if you do that, if you will do the turns with very high g-forces everywhere, then during the ride, probably your passengers will have, will have their ears bleeding and eyes popping out. This is nasty thing. <laughs> you don't want this to happen. <laughs> So, and the first thing uh, in the roller coaster design is the kinematic analysis. So it, me, it consists in determining the velocities of a roller coaster at any point of the track. To do that, you have to solve this very simple, simple tiny equation. <laughs> uh, in order to be able to, to, to do this, you have to define several parameters, such, such as track geometry data, wheel friction data, and train data. After that, uh, you, so the first step is defining the track parameters. How it was done in this work? First, the uh, 3D geometry of the track was analyzed with the grasshopper algorithm, which extracts the uh, geometric parameters of the track at points with a given spacing. And then in this work, it was done, uh, the spacing of the track parameters was uh, extracted with the 0.85 meter spacing and you can see the table of these parameters. But actually the code for design of roller coasters allows up to 5 meter spacing. 
after <coughs> parameters defined, you can plot the you can plot the velocity chart. And here is how it looks. You can see that the train successfully uh, reached the end of, track, of the track since the velocity doesn't drop to zero anywhere in the middle of the track. But you can have different situation where the velocity actually drops to zero somewhere in the middle of the track. That means that the train is stuck and you have to call the fire brigade to rescue the passengers. <laughs> this is again not a good thing to happen. So this means this is unacceptable. And. Uh, it means that the green plot should correspond to worst possible conditions. So it means the worn and dirty rails, strong wind, bad wheels, and so on. In all other cases, your plot should look like this blue line, which corresponds to favorable conditions. Based on the data obtained from kinematic analysis, we, we determined the velocities, and now we can define the g-forces. And the plot for g-forces looks like this for this particular ro roller coaster. And by examining this plot, it can be found that the limits uh, of the g-forces, the values of g-forces and the, its duration uh, are not exceeded. The next step is determining the track load. So let me remind that we define the velocities uh, of the train considering the movement of the center of mass of the train. But the train consists of several cars. And the load coming from each car will be different. So having, having all the dates defined previously, we can find the track loads. And here is the plot of these loads. After that, you have to, to create a model. We have to build the model geometry. And the first thing, and again, it was done with use of grasshopper algorithms. Uh, so what was done? The, we have to follow, follow the same rule as for kinematic analysis, so 0 0.35 meter spacing. Uh, if you divide the track with this spacing, we get nearly 3,000 elements per each rail and main beam, and 3,000 elements for each of the connection plates. And each element has its own unique orientation. But this is actually not the worst thing yet. The situation with loads is really it's really bad. It's you can call it a structural engineer's nightmare. Since uh, there are 3,000 load cases corresponding to each of the uh, train positions. And uh, there is a time function for each load case, for time history analysis. And there are eight loads per each load case, one for each car. And each load has three load components. This case brings us up to 73,000 unique load values. So how do you create such a model? Graphic interface? Well, good luck. Uh, here, a different approach was used. First, again, was Hopper algorithm. Uh, was used to generate nodal data, bar code, uh, the node coordinates, node numbering, bar, end, bar start and test nodes, bar orientation, and so on. Next, it was exported to Excel. And then, just copy-paste sophistic uh, text interface. Nothing except text was used to create the entire model. Believe me or not. So after doing all these manipulations, you get this model. So not even a single click of a mouse was done in a graphic interface to create this model. Next, we are coming to the structural analysis. So for a given uh, model, the following analysis were performed. Static analysis for 3,000 independent static load cases corresponding to each of the train positions and dynamic analysis for moving train load in which the, uh, each load case takes the results of the previous one as initial conditions. And after that, the, there was a comparison between the results of static and dynamic analysis. So, and this is the most fun part of the whole process. This is the video showing the real-time deformations of the roller coaster under the train moving law. At least in, uh, this is what actually fun means for a structural engineer, at least in my understanding. <laughs> I hope in yours also. So the deformations in this video are not actually to scale, so don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to ride the roller coaster which bends like this. So uh, 
And also, unfortunately, you cannot see the position of the train itself, but you can understand it by the deformation of the track. So there are a couple of turns left. The train will finally reach its destination. Yeah, you can see how the track vibrates under the train load. Yeah, and that's it. And here are some visual results uh, of the analysis. Uh, the bending moments at the particular time step and the total displacement vectors. But unfortunately, graphic representation of results is not very useful for comparison purposes. Therefore, the comparison was made uh, in a different manner. Uh, it was made by defining an envelope of displacement uh, at every point of the track for three variants of track section shown in this table. Here are the plots for three variants. And you can see that the actual difference between static and dynamic analysis are, is not so big, surprisingly small. So, in order not to waste time uh, running the time history analysis, there have to be another procedure uh, to define, to preliminarily define the uh, susceptibility of a particular roller coaster to dynamic effects of the moving load, and which you can use on early stages of the design. So the following approximate procedure is proposed. Every track span is considered as a single uh, span beam with a train mass in the middle of the span. Then we define the period of the mode with the largest uh, effective model mass in the direction of the train load. After that, we define the uh, time it takes the train to pass the particular span. And we consider the train load as the half sine pulse load. Then using the formulas known from uh, structural dynamics, we can find approximate theoretical values of dynamic amplification factors. And this was done for two particular spans, uh, and the results of theoretical uh, dynamic amplification factors found by the formula, and the results, the results of the time history analysis and static analysis are presented in this table. So as you, as you can see, the theoretical values and the real values are somewhere close. Not, not exactly matching, but somewhere close. So one should ask a question. For which roller coaster this, the, the dynamic application factor would be large? So which roller coaster would be susceptible to dynamic effects of moving train? By using the formulas of the theory uh, of structural dynamics, we can, we can say that the, it will be in case where this value falls between 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 2. That means that either the roller coaster should have very slender track or very high train velocity. So this, the first one is not realistic since such a roller coaster would probably not satisfy the serviceability limits. But the other one is very real since there are roller coasters with speeds of 240 kilometers per hour in Dubai, for example. So conclusions. Uh, kinematic analysis for a coaster are needed to ensure passenger safety and to determine the laws on the structures. And uh, the generative algorithms, especially Grasshopper, combined, combined with the text interface of finite element software is an extremely effective tool for creating complex analysis models. And it was found that for a regular roller coaster, the dynamic application factors are small. And the approximate assessment of dynamic application factors can be done on early stages of the design without time history analysis, analysis by using the procedure just proposed. And thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. It's great timing. Do you want to take a question or two uh, about roller coasters? We'll switch on the power. Question. Oh, for the roller coasters, did you start with roller coasters or did you start with buildings or bridges or how did you get onto that path? Well, it is my hobby actually. So I, this was my graduation project like eight years ago when I was a student. But then I thought, why not making it bigger? So I just redone it in a better way. So this is the result. So it doesn't relate to my work in any, in any way. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a design designer of buildings, not, not bridges. So. Okay. How long did it take? To run the analysis? Uh, no, sure. no, the design of... Well, it took me like if you two hours a day, like two years. So, <laughs> yeah, long time. But the analysis took 
six days time history analysis. So it's quite long. Mm -hmm. With the roller coasters, you said this is a hobby. Yeah. Did you actually uh, design the sizes, shapes, the actual car shape sizes, like your tubing size and your your uh, plate girder, your folded? Uh, did what you, did, you, did you go into any of that? No, actually, what I did, I just checked the stress, check the stresses of the section, and that's it. Okay. More detail. No detail, yes. Yeah, since if, if I will go into detailing, it will take more than years. <laughs> <laughs> I used to fabricate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, that's cool. Some clever people. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any other questions? If not, uh, you know, catch us outside. And uh, thank you for coming. I hope it was entertaining and interesting. Uh, and last one is make sure you scan your barcode. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.